Bet tā kā šī ir starptautiska konference, kurā mērķis ir palūkoties ne tikai uz Latviju, bet arī kā Iveta Kažoka teica, ir te salīdzinājumie dati un ir labi redzēt mūsu arī kontekstā. Un es domāju, ka arī Eiropas kontekstā mēs varam salīdzināties arī pasaules kontekstā. Un šodien ir brīnišķīgi iespēja dzirdēt arī kādu fantastisku runātāju. Tas ir dr. Johns Lanons, kurš ir nevaldības organizācijas Doras izpildirektors no Īrijas. Un viņa prezentācija būs par to politikas un sabiedrības bez spēks piedarības sajūtas veidošanā Īrijas gadījums. Tā ka nākamās 15 minūtes jums ir Džona Lanon rīcībā. Lūdzu. Thank you. I think perhaps I'm carrying too many things here between the clicker and the microphone in my notebook, but we'll, we'll try nonetheless. Um, um, so, good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for the, the invitation. Um, I'm John Lennon. I'm the chief executive of an organization called Doris, which is a refugee and migrant support organization. Um, I'm going to talk about social cohesion, but I'm also very mindful of the comment that was made earlier this morning about the concept of social cohesion, perhaps reinforcing the power structures, um, it being a stabilizing construct. Um, I think perhaps the um, willingness to challenge the political structures may be an indication that there's an, an, an appetite for change um, and, and for challenging those structures. But I do also think that while we're working on that to the extent that it's necessary, we do also have to look at some of the small changes that we can make along the way. And we do need to ensure that for anybody who's living in our societies, in our communities, that the sense of, of belonging is, is real. So I'm going to touch on a few aspects of the, um, the, the social cohesion awareness matrix as, as it was introduced and the report. Um, migration processes, attitudes towards diversity and accepting differences is part of what I'll talk about. Social and political practices of the, the population altruism and charity, but, but mostly I'm going to talk about the sense of belonging. And um, I guess I'm doing that, as I said, from the perspective of somebody who works with refugees and migrants back, back in Ireland. Um, Doris was set up in the year 2000. It's actually the Irish word for door, the idea being that it's an open door for refugees and, and, and migrants. We take a human rights-based approach to our work. Five key principles, universality, indivisibility, um, equality and non-discrimination, participation, and the other one is accountability. So those underpin everything that we, that we do. Um, so let, let me just give you a, a sense of Ireland's recent history in terms of, of migration. So we joined the EEC, Economic European Economic Community, Sorry, I can hardly remember now what it was back in 1973. Um, it's gone through changes, of course, since then. With, with a generally positive net migration um, into the country in the 1970s, about 100,000 people more arrived than, than left the country. That changed in the 1980s. Um, net migration, um, I think about 185,000 more people left the country than, than actually arrived. The trend changed again in the 1990s. I mentioned here as well an important historical moment in our history, which is the Good Friday Agreement, or the Belfast Agreement, as it's also called, depending on which of the communities in Northern Ireland that you, that you come from. Um, people born... Sorry. So, yes, people who were born in Northern Ireland could choose between being British and Irish citizens. Um, and we've had quite a complex interplay between that agreement that was signed to end what we euphemistically called the Troubles in, in Northern Ireland. Um, between that and the idea of citizenship and identity and human rights in Northern Ireland, which is, is quite a complex topic that we could spend an afternoon talking about alone. Um, 2000, we um, started to have a significant inflows of asylum seekers or people seeking international protection in, in Ireland. Um, 
After that then, then the years beyond that as we moved into the, that, that decade, significant numbers of people coming from the countries that had joined the European Union, particularly for economic reasons, including quite a significant number of people from Latvia. Um, and then, I guess, the point at which we began to think about integration and consequently began to think about social cohesion was probably in 2007. Um, we um, appointed a new Minister of State for integration in, in the government, um, and they had responsibility for the development of policy around the area of integration. So I guess I could probably sum up most of my presentation today to say that since then, we've been trying. It doesn't mean we've got it right, but we've, we've been trying in different shapes and in different ways to do this. Um, the government did, back then, show their commitment to social cohesion and to integration by um, giving it the prominence of having a minister. Um, that minister had cross-departmental mandate to drive and coordinate integration policy across the various departments, across the agencies, like the, the health service executive, for example, and, and, and the services that were delivered by the states. Um, they also funded measures to um, foster greater social and civic participation, um, which, which has been quite positive. That's participation by migrants in, in Irish life. So that, that has been quite, quite um, important, I think, since then. Um, what else have we had? So, um, most recently, if we jump forward then to um, last year, to, to February, when the full-scale um, invasion of Ukraine began, um, significant numbers of Ukrainians started to arrive in Ireland. Since then, we've had close to 100,000 people who have arrived. And I have to say, we, we've been struggling with the accommodation aspect of that since February 2022. And that has meant that it has distracted us from all of the other aspects of integration and challenges relating to social cohesion. Um, and, and that kind of masks or overrides everything that, that we're doing um, since then. Um, there is incidentally about, I think it's 750,000 people in Ireland now who are non-Irish citizens. That's out of a population of about 5.3 million. Um, okay, so some of the things that, and again, it's looking at the, the report that was launched this morning, some of the interesting things around um, social cohesion that, that were mentioned in that, um, but it being a society where individuals and community are bound together by strong social ties. Um, the idea of a common identity, building trust, building mutual respect among different members of the society, and consequently then the need to ensure equal rights and equal opportunities. Um, people taking part in social and political processes. And again, this sense of belonging and having this sense of belonging. Um, and and as, as I thought about identity, I was, I'm always quite struck by the fact that people have, always have, we all have multiple identities. Um, for people who are from a refugee or migrant background, being a refugee or being a migrant is just one of their identities. Um, they could also be a doctor, they could be a member of the LGBT plus community, they might be a footballer, they might be a Muslim. There, there are so many aspects, but most of us probably have the opportunity to decide which of our sort of social characteristics or roles or, or group associations that we, we, we choose to give prominence to and, and how we, we choose to, which of these are important to our identities. But for refugees and migrants, that's generally not the case. Um, they're, they're, they're labeled in ways that, and, and seen in ways that overshadow so many other aspects of, of their identity. Um, a couple of two, two pictures here that I've just um, put up. One of them is actually a sculpture, the, the top one, Bruno Catalano, and it's in Venice. Um, some of you may, may know it. Um, and it's just to demonstrate how migrants often leave quite a bit of themselves behind. Um, we also know that migrants also mask or, or hide a lot of their own identity as well. And, and are forced to do that often very in, in, our, in our societies, when rather than integrating difference, we, we try to force assimilation. 
and, and ask people and expect people to conform to what we see as, 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 as being the, the, the dominant sort of culture or identity within, within the society. So um, th th this, is, um, this is something that, that a lot of the people we, we support often reflect on for us. The, the other um, sculpture there, which has the, the Pope standing beside it, Angels Unaware is called, it's a Canadian artist. Um, and it was in St. Peter's Square in 2000. Um, 140 different migrants are, are depicted in that from different backgrounds. A Jewish man escaping from Nazi Germany, there's a Syrian refugee. But it shows them, what's particularly important about it is it shows them carrying their own identity with them. You know, doctor, school child. And, and it, it's, it's, um, it's challenging this idea of the refugees being a huddled mass or a homogenous group that arrive into our, into our society. I've also added some interesting quotes from a, a Limerick um, artist, Limerick being the city that I come from, called Denise Chyla, who's um, herself got both Zambian and Irish um, as association, and she, she speaks about how people try to belong and the efforts and the work that they have to go to, to to try to belong. She's also picked up on this phrase that we often use in Ireland so many times a year. So where are you from originally? And, and th this is something that is said, generally speaking, by Irish people to, to be friendly. But, it, but it's interpreted as a question that people, the, the, the one that's asked feels that it's questioning, to some extent, their um, right to, to belong. Um, and it's something they get very tired of answering. Um, so we, we do have, in, in that city in Limerick, where I'm from, we have a... Um, a strategy which goes back to 2007 when the minister was selected um, or appointed um, called Belonging to Limerick. Um, based on the concepts underpinning it, people need to be welcomed, known, included, supported, connected. Um, and the five thematic areas that I've highlighted there that were given priority based on research that was done with migrants. I just want to speak on, on one of them, which is on the act of citizenship, the last one. Um, the, the implementation of the strategy um, focused on a number of things. One of them was assisting and strengthening migrant-led representative groups to ensure migrant voices are heard. Another one was encouraging migrants to vote. Um, people um, who are non-EU citizens can vote in local elections in, in Ireland. Um, it focused on increasing participation in local community groups, civic activity, volunteering and so on, and supporting cultural events that celebrate diversity. So this was something that the agencies, that non-governmental organizations, that others worked on together to um, ensure that Limerick, which is a, a city and county of about 200,000 people, was, was able to, um, to, to promote and to work actively on. Just two, two reflections, quick, quick enough reflections. One of them around um, the, the whole sort of area of arts and, and culture. Um, the, there's a quote here which is probably a, a reasonable enough observation in terms of the, the changing population structure, um, meaning that um, mapping of communal Irishness onto existing categories such as traditional music become increasingly difficult. And um, the traditional music, I guess, in, in Ireland was a space that was sort of a lot of Irish people would felt comfortable in or felt they, they belonged, or at least by listening, if, if not playing. But over the last few years, other cultural and artistic spaces have started to emerge. And, and one of them um, is the, the hip hop scene in, in Limerick, which is kind of re really interesting. Because one of the more interesting things about that scene is that um, people from the, the traveler community, this is a small ethnic, um, ethnic community that we've had in Ireland for the history of the state and, and long before it that have experienced racism and discrimination because they're, they're nomadic by, by nature. Um, they feel more at home in that hip hop scene that's largely populated by people from African and from other um, backgrounds in, in the city of, um, of Limerick. Um, one of the interesting things that we did in terms of trying to bring those together was to set up what's called a World Music Cafe, providing both that cultural space but also the physical space where people can come together to merge their, um, their um, 
cultures and their, um, their interests. The other interesting area is, is sport, and, and the main sport in Ireland, which is run by an organization called the Gaelic Athletic Association, have the phrase, where we all belong. And this is a fine example of a space where we actually need to do a whole lot more work. They're trying, but there's a lot more that needs to be done in terms of ensuring that everybody does belong. I've got two other photographs here, one of them which is the, a, the cricket club in, in Limerick, and people who go to the cricket club are seen as very different. There, there is another in of people who go to, who, who take part in, in, that, in, in the, the sport of cricket in Ireland, because most of them are from South Asia. Um, a few English people who go there as well. A few Irish people do play cricket, but they're, they're, they're seen as, as in, in a different light, I, I guess, than, than, um, than they should be. Um, the other photograph is Rashidat Agileki, one of the best athletes we've ever had in Ireland. She happens to be black from an African descent, and um, the attitudes to her are quite interesting. We're proud of her, but you also see quite a bit of racist um, attitude to her as well. Um, the last thing I wanted to mention is the role of civil society, because we, while we, um, I guess, we, we have the, the important role played by government in terms of the integration um, portfolio that, that is held by a minister in terms of their responsibility to develop an integration strategy, although I have to say they are behind in the development of the most recent migrant integration strategy. Um, but we, we, we find that civil society plays quite an important role. There are grassroots initiatives, um, they're fluid, they're organic, they're there, they challenge racism, they help people, they work on the streets, they work towards social cohesion. We've also got a, a vibrant non-governmental organization sector, primarily, well, focusing on both social um, services delivery and advocacy on behalf of marginalized and disadvantaged groups, um, working towards the common good. The voices of migrants um, needs to be improved. Um, they, need to f they, they need to find more spaces within those structures in civil society. But again, it's like we're, we're working on it. Philanthropy also plays a role. So um, as you can see here, the photograph of God is actually the, one of our current Minister for Integration with the head of one of the philanthropic organizations. And they're speaking to one of our quite successful initiatives in Ireland where 73 non-organizations work together as part of the Ukraine Civil Society Forum to um, hold government to account as, as well as supporting the concept of active citizenship. So I'm going to leave you with this quote because I found it quite, quite interesting. It's from the son of a very famous playwright in Ireland, but he was reflecting on how um, the, the American dream is something that is, is important in terms of how people aspire to belong in America, but in Ireland it's different. It's the what he calls the Irish dream, it's linked to sport, and it just highlights to me how context, you know, the, the context of it matters so much, and how belonging and one's sense of belonging can be very different depending on how that's framed within the community or within the society that you happen to be living. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you.